So let's talk about intercepts for a function here. So there's two types of intercepts we want to talk about, x-intercepts and y-intercepts. So an x-intercept for a graph is the x-coordinate of any point on that graph that intersects the x-axis, uh, which is what the inward intercept means. It's talking about where are you intersecting the x-axis. Uh, the y-intercept, defined similarly, is going to be any point. It, it's the y-coordinate on the graph. Well, I should say it's any point on the graph that intersects the y-axis. What's the y-coordinate of those things? So as we try to search for x and y-intercepts of the graph, I want to mention that it's very easy to do when you have the graph in front of you, right? So functions can be represented in one of four ways. The graphical approach is very nice when it comes to intercepts here. So if you look at this first graph A, which is the example of a parabola, we can very quickly see the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are going to be these points on the graph that intersect the x-axis. And the x-intercepts are going to be those x-coordinates of, the, uh, of these intersection points, right? So our x-intercepts here are going to be x equals negative 2 and 2. You don't bother telling me the y-intercept. Uh, sorry, you don't tell me the y-coordinate of an x-intercept because the y-coordinate of an x-intercept will always be zero. Since the point is on the x-axis, the y-intercept has to be, the y, excuse me, coordinate has to be zero in that situation. Similarly, if we want to find the y-intercepts, you only have to tell me uh, what is the y-coordinate of that point because the y-intercepts will always have an x-coordinate as zero because it's on the y-axis. So the y-intercept of this parabola will be uh, negative 4 here. So our x-intercepts are negative 2 and 2, and our y-intercepts are negative 4. Uh, now, this other graph over here, look at b here. Clearly, this is not the graph of a function because it fails the vertical line test dramatically. But nonetheless, the concept of an intercept makes sense for any graph, even if it's not a function. The x-intercepts are going to be those x-coordinates for which... It's going to be those x-coordinates where the graph is on the x-axis. So that's going to happen here, which counted off 1, 2, 3. Uh, so we get negative 3 as the first x-intercept. Uh, then we get, it goes to the origin, so that would be x equals 0. And then we also get this point over here, x equals 3. So we're going to get these three x-intercepts on this graph. The y-intercepts we're going to find similarly, right? The y-intercepts. Uh, looking here, we're going to get a y-intercept right here. So count it down, 1, 2. We're below the x-axis, so that's a negative value. Uh, so we're going to get negative 2 as the y-intercept. Uh, the, the origin was an x-intercept. It's also a y-intercept. That If the origin is an x-intercept, that'll also be a y-intercept. The origin is the only point that's on the x-axis and the y-axis. So if, the, if, if 0 is an x-intercept, it'll also be the y-intercept and vice versa. And then the last y-intercept right here would be at y equals 2. And so we see that this graph has three x-intercepts and three y-intercepts, but five intercepts altogether because the origin serves as both an x-intercept and a y-intercept.